Hi, my name is David Yang, one of the co-founders of FullSec Academy, and I'm really excited to be here today with Jackie Orr, one of our career success counselors. And today we're going to go over, what are we going to go over, Jackie? We're going to go over the five best tips to land your job after graduating from a coding boot camp. And where do these tips come from? So these tips come from our own alums, um, and they are a list of the five best things that help them land their first job. So we talk to alums all the time, and these are the five tips that they continuously give us and about how they got their first job. So why don't you weigh in? What's the first one? Yeah, so the first one is networking. It's extremely important for you to start thinking about the people that you know that work in particular industries you're interested in while you're attending a boot camp so that as soon as you graduate, you can let them know that you're looking for a full-time software engineering role. Um, it's great to tap into the individuals that you know first and then look into friends of friends and old coworkers and friends of coworkers and list goes on. And you know, one thing I really want to emphasize there is to look at your weak network. Mm -hmm. So many people, they say, well, you know, I am networking. And I'm like, well, well, what have you done? And they said, well, I asked my two friends and my mom. And I said, that's your strong network, right? If your mom, mom had a job in tech, she would have already given it to you. You have to do exactly what Jackie said. Go out to your what I would say your softer network, your old coworkers, friends from high school. These people, a lot of people are working in tech these days, all kinds of roles. And I guarantee you, they're seeing things all over their company campus. Come work in tech. Re refer your friends, referral bonus. So definitely reach out beyond just kind of the people that you have drinks with every Thursday night. Definitely. And then after you reach out to that immediate network of yours, you can then start reaching out to other alums yeah. um, and you can start reaching out to senior engineers that you might not know, but you can introduce yourself to them and really be able to showcase your skills and your passion. All right, Jackie, what's tip number two? So tip number two is to stay persistent in the job search. It can be really frustrating. It can definitely be discouraging at times, but you have to stay persistent and you have to remember why you chose to go down this career path. One of my mentors, Paul Graham from Y Combinator, he has this great essay called How Not to Die, and we can link it in the in the uh, description below. But the idea is that, you know, it's very easy to, like job searches, they don't end in a great boom, right? Well, I always tell students, your job search won't end when the recruiter at Google, Facebook, Amazon all point at you and say, your job search is over. What happens is people just kind of fizzle out because of they lose energy, they feel discouraged. And so really it's about persistence internally and realizing that, you know, what are the things that, that exactly that you got into this for and how do you keep going? So it's really important to, I would say, read that essay, How Not to Die, about finding out things, the systems and processes that, that help you keep going in the search. Yeah, and with that, it definitely is a balance while you're in the job search of applying, of talking to people, People. So make sure to take care of yourself and dedicate some time throughout the week to really uh, follow an interest or a hobby that you have just to kind of refresh yourself and remind yourself why you're in this search. Oh, tip number three. So tip number three is that you should consistently be studying. Study, study, study. Practice your algorithms. Practice uh, answering JavaScript questions, um, practice your behavioral interviewing. You have us to use as resources here, and you have your past instructors, and you have each other as well to hold each other accountable um, and work through different technical whiteboarding problems. And you know, there's a lot of commentary right now about the use of whiteboard or algorithmic questions in the job search process or in the job interviewing process. And I think there's rightful kinds of criticism for those. But that being said, Practicing and being good at those kind of questions will get you over a lot of the hurdles, right? Whether or not asking someone a whiteboard question on making their own linked list is a good hiring practice, you know, that's a debate, but separate of your job search process, right? Just accept that and focus on those things. We give several great resources. I think uh, the book Cracking the Coding Interview, mm -hmm. something we recommend a lot. There's a site, algoexpert.io, that has a lot of great questions built by one of the full stack students. And... What's the other one we'd like? Code Wars. Code Wars. Hacker Rank also has some great questions on there. And Leak Code is a fan favorite. Yeah. And so just give some time in your day to practice those. It's important. It'll pay off when you're in the room with somebody and they're saying, do this X, Y, and Z. It doesn't freak you out because, right. look, you're not going to figure it out there on the spot, right? Because a lot of these algorithms are named after people who spent their whole life coming up with this. You're not going to figure out pathfinding or link list duplicates in an interview on a whiteboard with someone you just met. All right, tip number four. So tip number four is to make sure you're using all your resources. Just like we mentioned a couple things that you can start doing now, definitely don't be afraid to think of uh, 
things outside the box of how you normally would look for jobs. Uh, give your time to volunteer for conference events so that people can get to know you in the industry. And one thing that you mentioned before is to give a talk at a local tech meetup event. That way you definitely build up credibility. Yeah, the giving out talks, one thing we have students do at Full Stack is prepare expertise in a topic. Everyone thinks giving a conference talk is represents the that you're an expert in a field for the last 20 years, right? And maybe in the old days in conferences, that's how it was. But you know, we work in a very rapidly changing field. There's constantly new technology, new paradigms, new ways of thinking about how to solve problems. If you become an expert in one of those things, you could be a predominant world expert on a very small topic that people are interested in, right? And we know there's meetups in New York, like the Node.js meetup, the React mm -hmm. meetup. They're always looking for new topics and they're always looking for first time speakers. And so that's something that we, we highly recommend to do. And of course, I mean, just think about it. You're framed in a way where you're not the predominant expert in one thing and everyone in the room is looking to hire, guaranteed. Definitely. And as you are studying for those phone calls, those technical screenings, and eventually the on-site interviews, make sure that you look at websites like Glassdoor, make sure that you are looking at company Twitter pages, Facebook pages, uh, even their own career site, as they have a lot of great resources there to really tap into what the culture is like and for you to better tailor your answers. Um, blog posts are also great to look into. It really shows that you've taken the initiative to see beyond just the job description and you see yourself as part of that organization's culture. I agree. I think writing is a really important thing that people can do about tech topics. And tip number five, stay in touch with a coach or someone who can help you navigate the process. So if you can find someone who, who if, you, if there's someone in your life who's helping you, a career counselor at full stack or perhaps a, a mentor in your own life, definitely continue to reach out to them. And I would say almost make it a a point of practice to every Friday, say, I'm gonna email Jackie, or I'm gonna email my coach at Fullstack about my progress for this week, even if all that if my, all I'm saying is that there is no progress. That's a way for us to know that we can help you, a way for us to know that you're doing, you know, how you're feeling, and, if, and we actually wanna hear the bad things that are happening, right? Mm -hmm. if, of course, we love hearing the good stuff too, but if the bad stuff is happening, feel free to reach out, let us know how we can help, even if, you know, if only it is discovering how we might be able to help you. So stay in touch. I would say that's tip number five. Yeah. Remember that we're a soundboard here. We're here to help guide you. If you've tried something and it hasn't been working, let's think about another uh, another path to finding a connection or to getting in touch with a certain individual for a coffee chat. We are here to be a resource to you. All right. So in summary, our five tips. Number one, network and network in un unconventional ways beyond just reaching out to your local strong network. Two, staying persistent in the job search. We do know it gets frustrating. You have each other and you have us to support you. And three, keep studying. It's really important to be good at the stuff that is viewed as you know hurdles you have to jump over, right? Those questions, you might never use it again. You might feel this is a waste of your time, but it's really important to be good at those questions. Tip number four is to use all the resources available for you to study, for you to practice, for you to be able to network with other individuals. And five, stay in touch with someone who can help you. If you're a graduate of Full Stack, that means our career counselors. If you're on doing this on your own, that means find a, finding a mentor and just make it, it's more important that you stay persistent with your the timing of the updates and necessarily the content of the updates. So make it a practice once a week, once every two weeks, reach out to someone who can help you and let them know how things are going. That's really important. All right, well, those are our five tips for finding a job after a coding bootcamp straight from the mouths of our successful alums and hope that helps.